The Kyoto Protocol actually has a reporting system that builds on what is in the convention. There are two main types of reports, as mentioned there, and the one-off reports. So we have the annual reports, which are inventories that indicate the level of emissions for sectors and activities that are defined. And then those are, those are submitted every year. And then you have national communications that are submitted every four years. They are more qualitative in nature. That's why Maria was saying it's harder to assess comparability because it's really a description of what your policies are like and what you plan to do. And then there are the one-off reports. There was a report that had to be submitted at the beginning of the first commitment period, another one that had to be submitted at the end of that commitment period, and then another one-off report that was submitted at the beginning of the second commitment period. So those are the clusters of reports that have to be submitted by the parties included in Annex 1 or the developed country parties, because differentiation in Kyoto is not just with regard to quantified emission limitation reductions for developed country parties, but also much more stringent and more detailed reporting for developed country parties. Um, there is a well-developed system. So we go to the next phase of review. There's a well-developed system of review. So there is a team of experts that actually looks in depth at each of the reports of these developed country parties and they make observations about these reports and they actually come out with a separate report called a review report. And then if you go down, so compliance, what happens actually under the compliance mechanism of the Kyoto Protocol, there are three types of triggers and trigger, uh, the triggering mechanism was a contentious issue that, uh, that stalled negotiations. So you have in theory the self-trigger, as we call it in compliance. So a party itself brings forward its difficulties and says, I need assistance. You have the party-to-party -party trigger. So another party can point a finger. So one party can point a finger at another party and say, we have issues with our compliance. Or you have the expert review team trigger, which is the only one that's actually been used, well, save for, for one case that I'll mention. So what happens is that all the reports, as I said, that are submitted by the developed country parties, they are reviewed very thoroughly by an, a team of experts who then make observations. And if the observations and issues reach a certain threshold, which is defined through guidelines issued by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, then uh, in, in theory, it is possible for the expert review team to raise what is called a question of implementation. So a question of implementation is defined as a failure to meet mandatory requirements. And if those so if there is a question of implementation that is indicated in the report of an expert review team, that leads then to the referral to the compliance committee. And maybe I take a step back here, because when most people talk about the compliance mechanism, they're thinking that this is about determining whether the party has met its Kyoto target or not, which is true. Ultimately, that is what you want to determine. But the Kyoto Protocol mechanism is a milestone-based um, procedure no in the sense that and we'll talk about this more in the next slide before the final determination is made of whether the target has been met or not there are certain methodological and reporting milestones that the expert review teams ensure each party has met because the reliability in the end of the information on whether a target has been met depends on the robustness of the system political and methodological system on which the reporting is based so you will see that a lot of the cases that came before the compliance committee actually refer to reporting issues and not to the failure to meet the target. So the compliance committee in South, and the, again, this is, this is an accident of negotiations. One of the issues when the compliance committee was being negotiated was, do we have one big committee that looks at both enforcement and facilitation, or do we have two? The compromise in the end was to have two branches in the committee. So you have the enforcement branch and the facilitative branch.